Hello, everybody. Uh, I just uh, hung up on the Pac-12 presidents that have been meeting for the last hour, so I hope they don't do something while I'm gone. And so <laughs> I've been out uh, walking. A lot going on. Uh, it's a very exciting day to uh, have the opportunity to uh, appoint uh, Coach Dillingham to the head coach position at Arizona State University, but I want to put all of that into perspective. Uh, we're in the process of building a, a one-of-a-kind, world-class research university that is also simultaneously connected to as many people as we can be connected to, helping them to move their lives forward. A part of all of that is having a fantastic football program that is innovative, competitive, uh, works uh, at every level to be able to compete against the competition that we have in the conference and the competition that we have in the country. Uh, we uh, don't want to be built around the notion of looking backwards and only the notion of looking forward, and this is our process. Our process moving forward here is to find the mix of talent of our coaches, our athletic department staff, uh, and our team to find a way to move to the highest level of competition while remaining true to what college sports is all about. College sports is still, in the case of football, about producing young men as potential leaders, young men as uh, more uh, rounded, uh, established individuals, young men and women throughout all of our sports. And so, Coach Dillingham is committed to the pursuit of that process, the process of finding young men, advancing young men, advancing our program to the highest level of competition. We're very, very excited uh, uh, to be in a position where, uh, it, it's kind of funny reading what uh, some of you guys in the back uh, sometimes occasionally say or write. Uh, it has little to do with the reality of the process by which one actually moves forward to find a competitive combination of talent and commitment and resources. You're sitting right here in a fabulously new renovated stadium. We have fantastic uh, uh, practice and training facilities. We have a fantastic university that has evolved uh, to support uh, this institution. And now we need a, a football program which is consistently competing to be the Pac-12 uh, champion, consistently competing to be in the Rose Bowl, consistently competing to be in the new football championship series, which is going to be expanded through our hard pushing and so forth and so on. So there's a lot up in the air, a lot, to, a lot that's happening. I want to thank uh, Ray Anderson, who has done a fantastic job as athletic director here, building our overall athletic programs, expanding our commitment to academic excellence from our teams, uh, expanding our championship programs, uh, and then being committed to making football work even with very, very difficult and very, very hard decisions. None of this is easy. And so I'd like to turn it over to uh, uh, Vice President Ray Anderson, uh, Chief of University Athletics. Thank you, uh, Dr. Crow, and thanks everyone for uh, coming out on short notice. Uh, indeed, uh, our excitement today to introduce Kenny uh, as our new head coach uh, is, is, is ex it's extraordinary. It's extraordinary. Uh, and I'm gonna take a little more time uh, to talk about the process and where we are. Uh, because it's important to understand that uh, it's a comprehensive, it's a changing, evolving landscape that we're in. College football as an institution has changed so dramatically uh, in the short four years uh, since a lot of these new things have come on. We are in a new era of college football and we expect changes to continue. It is going to evolve, but for the foreseeable future, it will continue to change. Uh, and so the future uh, is name, image, and likeness. A lot of talk about name, image, and likeness. The future is about the transfer portal in conference realignment and media rights that continue to create disparities between the haves and the have-nots. You have the NCAA governance. You have student-athlete mental health and wellness. You have the college football expansion. You have social media influences. You have social justice awareness and activities for student-athletes, among other things. And so it is, in our view, the new era head coach must be prepared to deal and embrace all of these challenges and the opportunities presented by this changing world. And so we at Arizona State, we are a unique and special place. And it will take a head coach like Kenny Dillingham to get us there. 
So I want to share with you a little bit about the process. There's been a lot of speculation about the process, the search, the interviewing, and the selection process. So let me take you through it uh, a little bit. This just didn't start three or four weeks ago. This process in terms of looking ahead started months ago. Along the way, we were able to get our friends at Corn Ferry, Jed Hughes and Garrick Yu. Corn Ferry, one of the leading search firms in this industry, to be on call knowing that we would be needing them. We go a long ways back with those guys. Dr. Crow has known them for years. I have known them for years. So they did an excellent job in helping us to vet through and really look at an extensive list of candidates. And then we had an internal group that's been working on this for some time, not in a vacuum. Don Bakke, one of our senior admins, very well versed in football. Gene Boyd, our deputy athletic director. Marcus Williams, our associate athletic director. Ken Lanfear, senior associate athletic director. So we had an internal group for weeks thinking about this process and vetting through and talking about potential candidates. This was a coast-to-coast, coast-to-coast extensive search. We looked at multiple candidates at various points in their career of all varieties. And there's been a lot of speculation about those folks. We will not mention names because of privacy. A lot of the folks and a lot of their agents who would be happy to be sitting up here this morning don't want that out there because it could compromise their own current situations and that's not fair to them. So for those who speculate, if you want to know those names and how many and when, then reach out to them or their agents and maybe they'll share that with you. But we will not because we respect privacy and I hope you uh, can uh, understand that. And then what we, what we did is at the suggestion and recommendation of President Crow, we put together a group of folks who know this institution, love this institution, have been part of this institution to advise us as a donor alumni group. Get their input, get their thoughts, get the feel of the community included in this process. And so we were delighted that Regent Greg Brewster, who is also a director in our ASU Alumni Club. And we were thrilled that Brian Sweetie, one of Dr. Crow's confidants and a real philanthropist who loves this university. And we were thrilled that Chris Michaels, our Sun Devil Club president and one of the founding members of our Sun Angel Collective joined us in those conversations. And we were delighted that Stein Koss, who is here, and Ron Roquet and Brock Eisweiler sat with us and went over the list of finalists, given the input, given their opinions, given the recommendations. And then we took the selection, the recommendation after intensive scrutiny and a bunch of very qualified candidates who were interviewed and spoken to directly, indirectly. And we came to, very frankly, a unanimous and exciting decision that we had our man in Kenny Dillingham. And so what did the process, what was the profile? The first thing we did is said, let's figure out what the new head coach in this new era looks like. And it started with one thing very simple. This new head coach had to be in tune with and relatable to the new era student athlete. Energetic, flexible, adaptable, collaborative, innovative, great partner, great personality, great listener, great experiences winning and learning from others strong, passionate about this place, someone who knows marketing and promotion, someone who knows business, and as young as he is at age 32, 
the multitude of accomplishments and experiences and successes that Kenny Dillingham brought to the table was undeniable. And so this is a place where you needed someone who loves this community, loves this university, loves this state. And I believe that when you get a chance to bring them home, you bring them home. And there's something deliberate about that because if you look at some of our head coaches, some of whom are in the room today, there's a lot of homegrown talent here. Zeke Jones in wrestling, Greg Powers in hockey, Missy Farke in women's golf, Willie Bloomquist in baseball, Petra Pardee in softball, excuse me, in water polo. And now today we bring home our six alum who was involved deeply in the program here to lead us. And we actually got a two for one because Brianna, Mrs. Dillingham, was a varsity dance member cheerleader here in her days at ASU. And so the, the, the old saying is a factor. Home is where the heart is. And we got all that in Willie. Bloomquist, we got all that in the others, and now we have it in Kenny Dillingham. And then when you learn that eight generations are born and raised here in Arizona, we didn't even know that. It's like, wow, all those things matter. And so I wanted you to understand and share with you the fact that this was a deep, involved process. It's been going on a long time. We won't tell you how long because that's nobody's business but ours. But it wasn't willy-nilly. It wasn't that we started late, et cetera, et cetera. It was done in a comprehensive, efficient manner with the right people involved. And so for us, Kenny Dillingham is all of those things that we were looking for when we did our profile and more. And so I am delighted to introduce Ken Dillingham as a new head coach of Arizona State football. I'm home, but first thing I wanna say is I wanna thank Dr. Crow, Ray Anderson, Gene Boyd, Marcus Williams. I mean, this is literally home, home. in football. <laughs> His wife's been at it all morning, so he had to catch up. So I say that because this place is special. The state is special. The people in this room are special. I got guys in my wedding right there. Pretty emotional, right? It's just who I am. The one thing you're gonna get from me, okay? I am who I am. I am who I am. I'm gonna be the same person every single day I show up to work. I'm gonna be fired up to be here, fired up to be a Sun Devil. And this place, what this place needs to be successful, it's already been successful, we've seen it. The leadership from top to bottom is in line. That's why I'm here right now. The leadership from top to bottom is in line. We need this entire valley to come together. You want to win at the highest level. You want to maximize this place. We need everybody in this room, positive things, positive things. We need everybody in this room to get involved. If you don't know how to get involved, how do you get involved? This is one of the biggest metropolitan areas in the country. It's growing at a rapid rate. We need the valley behind us. We need the state behind us. We need butts in seats. We need everything that this valley has all in. Because I am all in, right? For me, that's my family right there up front. Pretty cool. <laughs> right? <sighs> Sorry. Okay. I got guys I played the little league with. 
right back there. Didn't know they were going to be here. Played Little League with them, right? I got guys I used to go to their, their, their mentoring uh, dinners on Thursday. Now Lawrence in the back. I didn't know he was going to be here, right? When you talk about a person and a family that's rooted here, that's me, right? And my, fa- my, my whole family's up here. My wife, Bree, mom, dad, sister, brother, brother-in-law who coaches high school here. My little son, Kent, my, my father, and uh, I don't know where Kent is, but he's over there. But there he is, father-in-law, mother-in-law. There he is holding him up. But I mean that, I mean that and sorry I'm emotional, but this is special. This place can be special, and it is special. We're going to hire people who believe in it. We're going to put our hearts into it, right? And we're going to maximize every drop that we can get out of it, right? And this is my dream job. That's all I got. Michelle Gardner, Errors in a Republic. Welcome, Coach. Thank you. Obviously, the move to bring in a new coach started in September when uh, Herm was ushered out. Can you talk about maybe your thoughts about when you heard that and when did it really sink in, you know what, this is a chance for me to go home? I mean, immediately, but I, uh, at the same token, you know, you got to, this, this profession's about winning. It's about believing in people. And when I'm around people, that team, uh, you know, the, the, the team, Oregon football team, those are my players, and I was all in. And I did everything we could to, to win as many games, score as many points. And uh, I knew the best way to get this dream opportunity was to be the very best I could be every day. And uh, that's, that's just who I am. You wake up every day with a smile on your face, and you try to be the very best version of yourself every single day. And I, it definitely brought a smile to my eye uh, a little bit, or a smile, a smile a little bit, but it, uh, it just motivated me more to work. Hold Rabino Devil's Digest, congratulations, Kenny. Thank you. I know you're very thankful to the people on the stage, the countless people that were involved in the search process, but how much more gratifying is it that you knew that you had undeniable level of support from the, from the ASU boosters because, and I'm sure you would agree with the statement, without their support, this thing is not working. No question. I mean, that goes back to uh, Ray Anderson, what he said before is the college landscape is changing. And this isn't about me. This isn't about our staff. This isn't about just our players. This is about the Valley. We need the Valley. I'm gonna say that over and over again. We need the Valley. And that is a critical piece, right, to why I'm here. It's because I'm born and raised here. And I say that because we need you. So if you want to be involved, find a way. Chris Carbon, Sun Noble Source. Uh, Kenny, congratulations, I'm here. Um, my question is for Dr. Crow and Ray. Um, we, you've been here before, uh, hiring a, a coach. Um, didn't have as much success as you had hoped or wanted. So what are the things, in light of what Kenny's saying, in light of what you said, Ray, about how different the landscape is in the last four years, what are the things structurally, institutionally, that can be done and need to be done to accomplish the goals that you have? Well, what, what, what I'll say to that is I think that Coach Dillingham is getting it right. So for lots of complicated reasons, the uh, football program at ASU isn't the central focus of uh, football thinkers in the, in the Valley and in the state, and it needs to be. So we've got to go back and, and connect and reconnect and newly connect and make this an unbelievably uh, exciting place to see unbelievable college athletes play fantastic, high-speed, highly innovative, high-scoring football. And it's got to be exciting, uh, and that's what we're after, and that's what Coach Dillingham does, that he, he creates the environment in which those things happen. But, I mean, deeper than that is this notion of, as the coach just said, connecting to this place. So in the past, we've been less connected for lots of different reasons than we needed to be. Now we need to connect and build from that connection forward and out. So that's what we're looking for here. And this notion of us 
going through processes to figure this out. You guys don't cover the people that were the deans and aren't the deans now. You don't cover all the other things going on in the university. This is a constant process trying to find the right leader, the right talent, the right mechanism, the right way to move forward while building all of the other component parts like this stadium, like the rest of the athletic department, like the other things that we have, the resources that we now have available and so forth and so on. So it's about returning the spirit of college football to the Valley uh, with a leadership team under the coach, uh, with a support group under uh, Vice President Anderson and making these things happen. That's what we're really trying to do. So that's a very good question. I don't, be, I don't want to be corny, but I'll uh, uh, so, uh, par paraphrase something from uh, a philosopher, and it goes something along these lines. When it's obvious that you can't obtain your goals, you do not change your goals, you change your action steps. That's Confucius, by the way. And so when it became obvious that the way we were doing it, although we believed that we had a chance to do it more successfully than we did, but our goals remain the same. We want to be top three in the conference, and we want to be top 15 in the country, and we want to win championships. And to do that, we have to change our action steps, starting with this new head coach and the staff that he will bring in and the things that we will do to try to reignite and re-engage our community and this valley. We are changing our action steps so that this opportunity is not wasted. <laughs> or, or your question now. <laughs> we love Nap, but we know what Nap. Uh, that's correct. Sun Angel Collective. <laughs> Chris, Chris Michaels, Chris Michaels is here. We will put you guys together immediately. <laughs> and, and, and part of what uh, our, our enthusiasm with uh, Coach Dillingham was, was that he would inspire the Valley to not just wake up, but to also give. So nap. That's the way to push that first domino, baby. Appreciate you. Yeah, Jordan Spurgeon, Sports 360AZ. Uh, welcome, Kenny. It's tough to, to follow that up for sure. Um, but I am curious. Um, you've been around here, and I've talked to a lot of people that knew you when you were younger, back in your days at Chaparral, and this sounds like it was always part of your plan. How have you just spent the last decade plus working your way up the ladder, going from grad assistant, going to assistant coaching roles, to a coordinator role, to now being here? And has that really sunk in for you yet, just the fact that you've been able to realize that dream? Yeah, I mean, just like I said, being genuine. I think being genuine is the most important thing. Whether people like you, they don't like you, I think you just got to be who you are every single day. Um, you know, I, I joke around, I'm brutally honest with people, whether they like it or not, but I'm going to give you the truth. Uh, and then just going to work and 
I, I, I always talk to our players about, you know, falling in love with the process of growth. Like, do you have a passion to get better? Do you fall in love with the process of, if you turn your foot in just a quarter of an inch, it's gonna prevent fall steps if you play wide receiver. And do you watch the tape and do you fall in love with the process? Do you get excited about that? Because if you don't, then you're worried about the wrong things. You better get excited about the details, excited about the little things. Because if you are, you're just going to get better and better and better and better. And that's just what I did. Every single day, I just got excited about getting a little bit better. A little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better, right? And then all of a sudden, you know, I hit bamboo, and the bamboo started to grow, and then we are, here we are today. Doug Howard, the athletic. Hi, Kenny. Welcome back. Thank you. Did you did you guys fly back into the valley last night? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Can you just give us an idea of what that plane ride was like for you, just coming off the the Oregon game and just the range of emotions that you experienced during that flight? Yeah, I mean, th those guys are unbelievable guys. There. I mean, anybody who who knows me knows I'm all about the players, and uh, this is this is a. This is a profession, but you're still dealing with 18 to 22 year old men, you know, young men. And that's why, like, for me, this program that we're going to have here is going to be based off of the word life. People here, when you think of Sun Devil football, you think of Sun Devil for life. We're going to be focused on the little things. We're going to have an intensity about ourselves. We're going we're to be focused on family, and we're going to be educated. And when a kid leaves here, he's going to know what we're going to be lifers, and he's going to know how to respond to adversity and he's gonna know what success looks like. And if I ask everybody in this room what success looks like, they're all gonna give a different answer. Everybody in here, success for you is completely different. We're gonna define it as one way in this program, that's just being the very best that you can be at whatever task you're doing. So when I say that, that's what, the, that's what we're gonna be about. We're gonna be about life. Our kids are gonna leave here understanding what it's gonna to take to be successful in life, right? And they're gonna be lifers, and they're gonna be sun devils for life. Kenny, Cameron Cox, 12 News, welcome back home. Could you talk about growing up here in this valley? What are some memories you have here of ASU and going to games? And then how will you recruit this valley? Oh, we're going to recruit it with all hands on deck. Could you ask me a question? Could you ask me one more question? Sure. Are we, could you ask me if we're retaining Sean Aguano? Are you retaining Sean yes, Aguano? Yes, we are retaining Sean Aguano. <laughs> So that's step one. Sean's done an absolutely remarkable job here. As a person, everybody in this valley respects him. Anybody who's ever met him respects him. And I couldn't be happier. You know, one of the first people I saw when I got here was, was Coach Aguano, and it just, he brings a joy to you when you, walk, when you see him in the room. And there's not many people who can do that. Uh, in terms of growing up in the Valley, I mean, the Jake Plummer era, right? I would go and, and sit in those seats, right? We'd go and tailgate out in the, in the parking lot. There used to be motor homes that used to pull up, right? Right in front of the baseball area for people who remember. I was one of those little kids at the motor home throwing the football, trying to not to get hit by a car after the game, right? That's a memory I had almost getting hit by a car, throwing a football, right? I remember being, you know, as a, as a graduate assistant here, the Jail Mary, right, all those times. You look about this place and there's a lot of special moments, right, and we want to create a lot more special moments. Hey, Kenny, uh, welcome home. Uh, Brad Jane, 3TV, CBS5. Of course, you know, as Ray mentioned, you know, this, the, the new era of, athletic, of college athletics, and it all such a critical factor. What's going to be your strategy to get ASU where they need to be? Just activate the valley, time, time, relationships. When you really think about anything in life, it comes into time, and your time decides the, the matter of importance. If you put your time in one thing more than you put your time in another, that's the level of importance that means to you. I'm gonna spend time building relationships with people in the Valley, right? I already have a lot of them, but I'm gonna spend time, I'm gonna work, and our staff, our staff is gonna be people who will build relationships in this Valley because they love this Valley. They love the Phoenix metropolitan area, they love this state, and they're gonna do everything they can to make this place uh, one of the best schools in college football. One, real, real quick here, Gene Boyd, Deputy Athletic Director. One thing I would add is Kenny talked about Coach Aguano staying on board. Um, as Co Coach Aguano was taking us through a very challenging moment uh, and really understanding transformatively as the leader of the program for those months um, and as someone who will continue to be a leader in the program, that NIL, how you manage 18 to 22-year-olds in this modern time period, 
all those things that we're talking about, uh, how critical those were. And he's also made some inroads. So, you know, this will be a recurring thing, the NIL piece, but he's also made some inroads with some individuals who are newly interested in being involved and being connected in ways that will grow this. I mean, Kenny's going to say it over and over again, uh, activating this valley, activating this state, and anyone who's a Sun Devil for life, and there's thousands upon thousands upon thousands of them out there uh, to get back involved in, in so many different ways. Just thought I'd throw that in there. Thank you. Hey, Coach, Jack Loader, Devil's Digest. Could you just give us a quick glimpse into the, the timeline that you guys plan to build the rest of your staff besides Coach Iguano, what kind of individuals we can expect to see? I mean, I think some guys will, will come fairly quick, and then other guys, we're going to do our due diligence, making sure we hire the, the best candidate for the job. Uh, the one thing I know is I have, a, I have a plan for what I want, and sometimes those plans, if you want the best thing you can get, you have to be patient. So we're going to have to be a little patient on, on some ends, but other guys, uh, you know, we're going to move quicker on. Kenny over here, Craig Fui, ABC 15. Uh, I grew up watching you. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that a lot lately. <laughs> Hey, congratulations, first of all. Welcome back. Uh, you've got a lot on your plate right now. I mean, today, tomorrow, the next few days, what's first? What do you have to do first? Where are you moving in the next few days? What's happening on your priority list? Players. Meet our players. This is, this is all about the people. Meet the players and meet the people associated with the program, right? The place, this is home for me, but every place is about the people, the people in the building from the, the janitors to the secretaries, right, to the players, right, to the other coaches, right? I mean, we, we talked today, I'm like, what other, what other games are there this week? I want to go to as many games as I can go to, right? I was mad I missed the hockey game last night. I mean, golly, right? So for me, it's get around people and the people, the people, the people, and that's what matters. Hey, Coach Jordan Ham, Sports 360 AZ, right over here, good to see you again. Um, you grew up in the Pac-12 landscape, Pac-10, Pac-12 landscape. You've coached here, but you also left and, then, and now coming back to the Pac-12. How did leaving and going to other parts of the country help broaden your scope and look at the type of talent that the country has and how you'll recruit that? Yeah, I mean, I think it was a great experience for me to, to get in different regions because every place is different. And I think what I truly learned was you have to recruit to the place because kids still have to live where they go to school. I think so much in recruiting, you know, when you're recruiting a kid, you know, at some of these places, you try to distract them, right, from the reality of living there, right? And in reality, this is one of the greatest places to live in the country. And the best schools and the best teams have the best players. And all people have to do is say, hey, we're the best players, and we want to live in arguably one of the best cities. And then guess what you're going to have? One of the best teams. It's really that simple right, is for us, make it okay to be a champion here, and we're about to. Coach Dillingham back here, Lena Washington, 12 News. Congratulations, welcome home. Thank you. Uh, I know this means a lot for your wife, Bree, as someone who is on her team at ASU <laughs> here. Um, what did this mean? Again, you touched on the whole family element, but how did you tell them? What was their response? And just take us through the emotions of coming home and communicating that with your family here? Yeah, I was fired up. I mean, it's like, we're, we're, all, we're, all, we're all sports people. We were all Arizona, I mean, Arizona State grad, Arizona State grad, Arizona State grad, Arizona State grad, right? So it was just super exciting. I mean, big hugs. I mean, I, I finally got to eat Ajo Al's salsa again, right? I'm a big Ajo Al's fan. I finally got home and we had Ajo Al's salsa at home last night at, at 1030, right? So that fired me up, but the emotions were, were real. Right, that this is, a, this is a dream that not just I had, everybody had, and here we are. Coach right here, Greg Moore, Arizona Republic. Pleasure to meet you, welcome home. Thank you. And thanks for the emotions, man. I felt that, right, like I can tell what it means to you. That's, that's gotta be something that is beyond words. Now, there's certainly going to be detractors who say it's too much too soon, that you rose too fast, that you couldn't be ready, that you've never failed. What do you have to say to those people? I mean, I was an offensive coordinator at 21, dealing with parents who are worth multi-millions of dollars, right? I've been an offensive coordinator uh, 
at Memphis. I've been leading men at Auburn at 27. I've been leading men at Florida State at 29. I've been leading men at Oregon, right? It's all about leading people, right? That's all it's about, right? Relating to people, leading people. And I think today more than ever, people say kids are changing, kids are changing, kids are changing, and I completely disagree. I think people are just allowing kids to change and people are scared to tell kids the truth. Right? That's the one thing that I can stand on is if I tell you something's going to happen. And I think that's a big reason for why I'm sitting here today is I've never been scared of the tough conversation. Hey, Coach. Noah Furtado, Sun Devils Source. You mentioned making Sun Devils for life. In recent years, it's hard sometimes for ASU to keep the best players in the state. What, what goes into the process of building that relationship with the kids here? And, and also, is that, how do you make that a realistic aim to keep them here? when they come in the age of NIL and just all the influences of the transfer portal. Yeah, I think uh, Co Coach Iguano is one piece of that. I mean, he's a guy who's extremely, extremely rooted in the Valley, extremely respected. And I think any parent, a loved one who could ever meet him, you would, want, you would want to drop your son off for college for him, right? The staff we're going to produce, right, is built with good people. And that's the number one thing I will not budge on is we're going to have people who want to help kids grow into men and be successful in life. And I think for us, us already already being here, the, a lot of our staff, you know, we're going to be rooted in Arizona. We're going to hire a staff that has roots here, that has connections, right? And how do you sign kids? How do you, how do you build a roster? Relationship. Relationship. What does relationship take? Time. Build genuine relationships. And you can't just hop in and, and, and recruit a kid when he's a junior. Right? Are we going out to Pop Warner games? That's the reality. Are we building relationships in the community? Are we hosting youth clinics? It's everything. It takes a village is the saying, right? This is just the fourth biggest village in the country, right? We need this village. That's what it's going to take to keep these kids home is we need this village. Hey, Coach. Jake Seymour, Cronkite Sports. Um, Talking about the recruiting aspect of it, obviously there's a high school aspect, but how do you plan to tackle the transfer portal and keeping players who are on the roster on the roster while getting talent in the portal as well? Yeah, I'm going to keep going back to this word relationships. you got to build relationships with the guys. I know it's a boring answer, but there's two choices. You can lie to a kid or you can be honest with the kid. I'm going to choose the, I'm going to choose the be honest with the kid, right? And I firmly believe if you're honest, if you're genuine, you're going to reap what you sow, and at the end of the day, right, good things are going to come to you. So how do you do that? How do you build a roster? You be honest with people, you show them your true colors, show them who you are, and then you show them that this is going to be a, an offensive system built for playmakers that's explosive, right? We've shown that from multiple places, multiple schools, that this is a system for playmakers. And if you want to score points, if you want to get the football, if you want to go up and down the field, if you want to be your play on Sports Center, right, this is a great place for you, right? On the defensive side of the ball, we're going to attack. We're going to attack. If you like sacks, if you like TFLs and you're a defensive player, if you like playing man-to-man -man coverage to put on tape for NFL teams that you can play man-to-man -man coverage, right, you're going to want to come here because that's what we're going to do. Everything about this program is going to be attacking. And how do you recruit to that? Put the film on. Yeah, Coach, you might, you might mention when we, when we had our earlier discussions, uh, you were very positive about the portal and what the portal has done to open up the freedom of movement of no question. young men to find places to uh, advance their talent where they had in the past been stuck or no, trapped. No question, yeah. I am a firm believer in the transfer portal. I am the number one advocate for it. Because what happens in recruiting is you have a whole bunch of people tell kids what they want to hear for two, three years. And in the past, those kids would get told what they wanted to hear and they'd get stuck. But now they're stuck and they're trapped. Now, you, you better be the person you say you are. You better, you know, come through with those promises. I am a firm believer in the transfer portal, right, for that reason, is it gives the power to the kids. And that's who needs the power in this deal. That's who this is all about. It's about the players. It's about the kids. And for me, we're going to attack the transfer portal. Attack it. Attack it with everything we have. And there's going to be balance, hopefully in the future. We can attack it a little bit less and a little bit less and a little bit less. But there's a lot of kids throughout this country who want to live in Phoenix, Arizona. I believe 48% of our student body is transfers as a whole university, something along those lines. Because guess what, people? People want to live here. NFL players move here when they retire. 
So if you're a player, if you're a prospect, right, and you're looking at where you want to be in 20 years when you make these decisions, right, the network you can build here, a place that you can live the rest of your life, you want to go to school the place you're going to live because you're going to build all those relationships. And everybody that knows life knows it's about relationships. That's why I'm sitting here today. So if you want to build the relationships that are going to help you in life, go to a school where you want to live. And this is one of the greatest places to live, in my opinion, the greatest place to live in the country, right? So that's my challenge to everybody out there is right there. Come on. Hey, hey Coach Mark McLoon, 3TV CBS 5, welcome home. Uh, Thank you. Congratulations on your first donation there to the <laughs> Sun Angel Collective. That, that's actually my question about the NIL deal, and you've been around the country and coming from Oregon. How ready is this place to compete from an NIL perspective? We're ready when everybody's ready. We need everybody. It can't be, oh, uh, thank you. Okay, that's good. We just got a million dollars. That's unbelievable right there. Well, where else is it coming from? Like, like we just said, he did that to inspire everybody else. What are you doing? You may just buy season tickets. You may just buy season tickets to hockey or baseball. You may show up to wrestling. Whatever that is, what can you do for this program? Not just football. What can you do for this university? Because this is the flagship. This is the flagship. So from that standpoint, it's getting the valley all in. If we get the valley all in, the sky is the limit. Coach Anthony Dozier, PHNX Sports. Uh, congratulations. Right here. Can't right track here. you, sorry. Uh, what would this version of Kenny Dillingham say to the version in 2014 that was just an offensive assistant here? I'd say, don't mess it up. This is what you wanted. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know it's funny, but it's the truth. I mean, when people told me from when I first started coaching, you know, what's your dream job? What's your dream job? I always said this. You can ask anybody I worked with. This was it. This is the dream job. So what would he tell me? Don't change. Be who you are. Coach, Kevin Redfern, House of Sparky. You talked about people wanting to come and live here. I would assume growing up here, you may have run into people who had said, I want to get out of here. I don't want to live in Phoenix, whether it be the heat or anything else. What would you say to a recruit that would tell you that? Yeah, just wait till you move out. You'll move back. <laughs> I, I mean, there's, there's a reason. There's a reason. It's one of the, the I think it's the fastest growing metropolitan area in the, in the country. There's a reason for that. Not by accident. You got great weather. If you're a quarterback, why would you not want to play where there's no elements, right? That's just the reality of it. You don't play in elements. If you're a skill guy, why would you want to go play in snow? If you run track here, why would you want to run track in the cold? You have unbelievable weather for all skilled players to always play without elements. That's a competitive advantage at its own. So for us, not just the living here, but the actual natural geographic advantages we have here, right, should actually attract skilled players to the university. Yeah, one of those guys, my high school coach, Charlie Regal, for sure, just elite competitor, elite leader. Uh, I mean, when you talk about a guy who can inspire, he can inspire, uh, and an elite teacher. And at the end of the day, coaching is teaching. With a, That's all it is. Come with a lesson plan, teach it, motivate. Uh, another guy, Mike Norvell, that's a guy that, you know, I've, you know, I'm near and dear to me, right? He's given me a lot of opportunities. He's a guy I've learned a lot from. You know, he's a guy who took over a program as a young offensive coordinator. I've been blessed to do that twice. Be at programs with young OCs, that a young OC and a young DC that take over a, a big time program and see them navigate it. So I learned a lot from him in terms of how to navigate that transition. Uh, and then a guy from a personal level is a guy named Gus Esposito. Uh, I coached his son in high school. Uh, he's actually from the Valley. And he's a guy who just motivated me every day and has given me a lot of direction. Hey, Coach. Jordan Ham, Sports 360 AZ again. Um, you mentioned watching Jake Plummer play here. Uh, you coached under Todd Graham, a guy who revered Pat Tillman. What values of Pat are you going to instill within this program? I think student athlete. For the number one thing when I think of, of, of Pat Tillman is student athlete and dedicated. 
you know, whatever he believed in, he went all in on. That was it. He was dedicated. He had the he had utmost belief in everything, but at the same time, he was the utmost student athlete. So I think for us, it's just his dedication, his belief, his passion. I mean, there's there's not just one. I mean, you could go on and on about about Pat Tillman, right? But for us, I think that's he embodies this program. He embodies everything about this program, right? And it's just blessed to be able to re represent him. Coach Dillingham, you know, a lot of times when, when coaches are coming places, they have their former number that they wore when they were growing up. And uh, we asked Kenny, like, hey, man, what number do you want on the jersey that we're going to present to you day one? So as you can imagine, based on what was just discussed, Coach Dillingham, welcome back to Sun Devil Nation. Thank you.